What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Critical Overload here. So we'll be going over one of these alleged, supposed, scrapped screenplays that Dimension Films wanted nothing to do with regarding Halloween. We're talking about the Halloween franchise here again today. One of those scrapped concepts. So this is for Halloween 3000. Maybe a lot of you are familiar with it. Maybe some of you like me are not familiar with this. But I did find this to be quite laughable as I was going through the screenplay. Which was rather short. I'll leave a link to it in the description if you want to check it out. So... Halloween 3000 would have been, for all I have gathered, would have been, it seems, a sequel to at least Halloween 1 and 2. It seems to have leaned more on being a sequel to that first movie, but there's aspects of the screenplay that you'll see that seem to indicate that it wasn't completely erasing the second film. Or maybe it was just including aspects of the second movie that go unexplained, but given the... Uh, context of the Myers mask it would it would appear that the second film was still canon as well anyway it seems that this story would have been about a boy named Jimmy Moyer Jimmy Moyer would have been for all intents and purposes our OG Corey Cunningham if you will the story is set mostly 28 years after the 1978 homecoming of Michael Myers and his attack on Laurie Strode and all of her friends in Haddonfield it would have actually began on that same Halloween 1978 night with Loomis shooting Myers six times, Lori saying it was the boogeyman, and Loomis says, as a matter of fact, it was. Looks over the balcony, and of course, Myers is gone. Then we cut back to Tommy and Lindsay running to the McKenzie house like Lori told them, and Tommy is yelling and yammering about being right because the boogeyman came for them that night. They are hanging or banging on the McKenzie door, Tommy actually starts kicking at it. McKenzie, Mr. McKenzie, that being, actually answers it, saying, what do they want? Because he's been trick-or-treated to death tonight. And we jump to the year 2000 after this. Halloween 2000, to be exact. Jimmy Boyer, or Moyer, is introduced as a rather weird, cryptic kid, it seems, because he's outside of the abandoned Myers house, kind of admiring it in a way, and praising the name of Sam Hain. He's 12 years old here. And has a therapist because he's a troubled youth just like Myers was. And he's apparently the most hated kid in town, according to these kids that are picking on him. Jimmy is harassed by some local punk kids as he walks down the street with his bike. And he ends up killing one of them with the butcher knife he just happens to have handy. Back at Jimmy's house, his mother is preparing dinner. Jimmy comes in and kills her while wearing a silver shamrock mask. His father comes home and asks, where mom is and jimmy pres presumably in an evil way laughs and says she's in the kitchen I'm, I'm assuming the father must have discovered the dead mother's body but then after this encounter we jump to 2006 at smith's grove he is now 18 jimmy that being lindsey wallace is reintroduced to the story as a now 35 year old criminal psych psychiatrist pleading with board members at smith grove about their decision to keep jimmy locked up until his 18th birthday so he can be tried as an adult for those murders he committed Jimmy has been under the care of Dr. Wynn, a character we briefly meet in the original film, and of course a character we know resurfaces in Halloween 5 while not named directly, and also Halloween 6. Um, Lindsay is the character who lets us know that Myers actually died back in 1978 after his gunshots despite getting up and initially walking away, and that Jimmy has only been uttering one word since he's been here, Sam Hain. She believes that Jimmy is basically going to be the next Michael Myers. She recounts how Timmy or Jimmy is possessed by Sam Hain, just like Michael Myers was. Since they didn't listen to her, guess what happens? Jimmy escapes from Smith's Grove. Chaos ensues. Patients are released from their rooms. Guards are killed. And then we jump to our new final girl named Lisa, I think, who has two other friends. One of these girls, is, I think, was also named Lexi. Uh, an obvious name I could recall after watching the Chucky TV show recently. And all of these girls are 16. So they're around the age of what Lori and her friends were in the original film. Granted, I think they were 17. So Lisa is working on a project for Haddonfield for school, I think. A project about how Haddonfield is haunted. Tommy Doyle is reintroduced as some crazy person, middle-aged, 35, just like Lindsay. Traumatized by the 78 event, so similar to his reintroduction in Halloween 6. Eventually, all of this escalates to Lindsay serving as a Dr. Loomis type in the entire film. 
Lisa is in a Laurie Strode type of role. And Jimmy is going around Haddonfield killing people while wearing the burned Myers mask. Now, the burned Myers mask is the thing that obviously indicates that there's some tie in to still what happened on that night and the events of Halloween, too. Uh, however, I didn't see anything blatantly in the screenplay that I can recall that really was too reliant on the second film itself. Mostly just the first one. We end up actually meeting someone named Willard, another character that's introduced, who was revealed to be Jimmy's little brother. And this is what Jimmy came home for, because actually when Jimmy escapes from his room, written in blood on the wall, I think is the word brother this screenplay mentions. So you see the obvious nods to the original with this type of plot device, not the original per se, but the first two movies. This builds to a finale where Tommy Doyle kills Jimmy with a rocket launcher, which just sounds comical to say out loud and seems very over the top for what should be a grounded slasher film. Willard ends up being established as the character the evil has now been passed on to. So he'll, he'll be the next Sam Hain possessed madman. I kind of do dig the concept of the evil being passed on to other individuals, but do we really necessarily need to see this i mean if you're gonna do more halloween movies i would assume they're just gonna keep on relying on michael myers at this point michael myers has become so much of a box office draw that we're just gonna keep seeing re reincarnations of michael myers i think we're far away from ever seeing the halloween franchise become an anthology the way so many people have been clamoring for because the money is all in myers myers is going to be brought back again at some point and i doubt we'll see any story like this happen where you have somebody becoming myers again and myers is barely in the movie he's barely in this movie as much as he was in halloween ends he's in halloween ends more than this concept i doubt we'll ever see a full movie anytime soon where myers is just almost absent although he's in this movie it's mostly just footage and flashbacks of what happened on 78 and then all of this is just J jimmy running around town wearing the myers mask and killing people so i don't think we'll ever see something like that uh basically pulling a friday the 13th part five in full effect because halloween ends wasn't a full full reincarnation of friday the 13th part five because michael was actually still there in friday the 13th part five jason wasn't around so i don't think we're ever going to see anything like this happen anytime soon i think we're going to always legitimately have michael myers back unless they somehow fool the audience into thinking it's myers and of course save the tricks for when we sit down and watch the film i didn't really necessarily like this concept i didn't like the screenplay uh again i do like the concepts imagination of or the idea behind the concept of having the evil passed on but i don't necessarily know if we need to see entries that are doing this now to this point how successful myers is i think we're always just going to see michael myers reintroduced in some new timeline over and over and over again constantly you guys can let me know what you think about this down in the comment section below if you haven't already of course make sure you subscribe turn on post notifications you're gonna miss a video in the description i have links to my social media accounts i am on facebook twitter and instagram you can message me there of course let me see movies news or reviews i'm going to cover in the future and with all that in mind guys i will see you in the next video